And remember this, protein is the body's least efficient. It is the last fuel source that your body will utilize or wants to utilize. None of y'all stopping me, don't need the axe, chopping trees, planting seeds, planting schemes, crossing eyes, stopping T's, lines are blurred, I cannot see, for I die, I'm top three, for I die, I'm top three. You tell me how many reps I gotta do. Okay. Okay. What is good, YouTube? You are back with the praise, out here in Juniper Park on another cold winter Wednesday. It is an off day for me. So I'm gonna be bringing you a nice nutrition video. I've been getting asked a lot more about diet and nutrition videos. So today's topic is gonna to be about what I find to be the biggest mistake I see people making when it comes to dieting that's keeping them from losing body fat. This mistake is literally what causes people to store body fat. And this could be if you're trying to cut or if you're trying to bulk, right? This mistake that people make that will make a total difference in their overall physique, how they start to digest food and how they start to look, this one tip will change everything for you guys. But before we get into that, let's first get into where our body can get energy from. Remember, on this whole entire earth, there are only three objects or three types of things, I'm going to call them things right now, that your body can get energy from. And those are the macronutrients. And the three macronutrients are proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And remember this, protein is the body's least efficient. It is the last fuel source that your body will utilize or wants to utilize for energy. I'm not saying that it can't be utilized for energy, but it is the last one your body wants to use. It is the least efficient. And in order for you to, your body to utilize protein for energy, you literally have to break down muscle. Because a protein, which breaks down to amino acids in the body and gets stored as amino acids in the body, comes from the muscle. So if you have to start to pull energy from protein because you're not getting any carbs or fats, you're gonna literally start to shrink and become a smaller version of yourself. Now, besides protein, you got carbohydrates and fats. Those are the two primary energy sources that our body wants to utilize to get us through our everyday activities. Now, one is more beneficial or more efficiently utilized than the other. And the easiest macronutrient for our body to digest, absorb, and assimilate are carbohydrates. Number one fuel source for the body, easiest to access, powers us through most of our exercise that's needed. And then we got fats. Fats take longer for the body to break down, but fats will also supply more abundant energy for a longer period of time than carbohydrates. But the types of workouts that each are gonna supply are totally different, right? Fats primarily will, will power somebody through a long endurance-based competition, just as well as carbohydrates will. But fats will not really power somebody through an anaerobic set as well as carbohydrates, meaning a set lasting, let's just say 30 to two, 30 seconds to two minutes, a nice bodybuilding style set. Three second down, eccentric, pausing, one second, concentric. So a four second rep for 12 reps. So that's a 48 second set, right? Let's just say we do a set of 20 for four seconds. That's 80 second set, right? That's a high amount of time on the tension. The most efficient fuel source for your body to utilize for that type of exercise is gonna be carbohydrates. But now, like I said, this video is gonna be telling you guys about the biggest dietary mistake that I see people making. And it's gonna come, and it's gonna have to do with, for that matter, carbohydrates and fats. Nothing wrong with either one of them. I'm not telling you you have to be on a keto diet. I'm not telling you that you have to be on a low fat, high carb diet. What I am gonna tell you is this, guys. The biggest mistake that you can make when you're eating anything, and when I say diet, I just mean in general with your daily eating habits, right? Start to separate meals. You wanna make sure you do not have carbs and fats in the same meal, or an abundant amount of either in one given setting, right? Because remember, carbohydrates and fats are your body's two 
main sources of energy. If you're giving it both at the same sitting, your body's naturally gonna wanna burn off those carbs and then store the fat. Remember this, guys. Carbs and fats in one sitting are going to make your body store more body fat. Reason being, you cannot utilize two sources of fuel at, independently at this, you know, at any given time, right? So your body is going to want to first burn off those carbohydrates and then store that fat. So all I'm telling you, and that's like I said, you don't have to avoid fats. You don't have to avoid carbs. You just want to not mesh them together. For instance, post-workout meal. You want it to be lean protein and carbohydrates. Why do I say lean protein? Because you don't want the protein to have a lot of fat in it to slow down the, absor the digestion of the carbs and have your body start to store the fat. If you're just giving your body protein and carbs post-workout, those carbs will get digested relatively quickly. The protein will have a slowing down effect on the spike of insulin because protein itself takes longer to digest. So the insulin spike you're going to get from the carb protein meal will be slower or lower because the carbs are now in the presence of protein. When I say protein, remember, I'm talking about a lean protein. Grilled chicken and white rice. Filet and white rice. Sirloin steak and white rice. Remember, there's still fat in chicken. There's still fat in a filet. There's still fat in a sirloin. But it's very minimal. They're all pretty much under 5 grams of fat for a 4-ounce serving. And they're all predominantly going to be high in protein. So if you get a grilled chicken breast, for instance, let's say a 4-ounce piece of grilled chicken, probably going to have around 20 to 25 grams of protein and about two to three grams of fat. And now if you break that down into a 100% ratio, because remember, food has to give you 100% of something, right? Your, your food's giving you 100% of the calories in it, right? So if let's say, say that grilled chicken breast has 80 calories, right? Or 100 calories in it. 100 calories from a four ounce piece of grilled chicken. And it has 20 grams of protein and three grams of, three grams of fat. 20 grams of protein is 80 calories. 80 calories out of that 100 calories are coming from protein. That means it's an 80% protein dominant food, as opposed to, let's say we're looking at a ribeye now. We got a nice, big, juicy ribeye. That ribeye is gonna have about 21 grams of fat and 23 grams of protein per four ounce serving, which is gonna give us about maybe a 300, 400 calorie piece of meat, as opposed to 110 calorie piece of meat, leaner. Same protein content, 10 times more fat in a ribeye than in a piece of grilled chicken or in like a sirloin steak, right? So now that ribeye that has 20 grams of fat, 20 times nine is 210. 210 calories out of that 300 calorie piece of steak because now we only got 23 grams of protein. That's only giving us another about 90 calories. So 90 calories from protein, 200 plus calories from fat that means that food is predominantly going to be a fat source as a protein source, right? That's why there's a big misconception from in the vegan community. You'll hear vegans say, oh, peanuts are a source of protein. Beans are a source of protein. But peanuts got way more fat in them than protein. Beans got way more carbs in them than protein. So they actually, beans are a carb source. Peanuts are a fat source. They got protein in them, but they're not a protein-based food, right? They're not a protein-rich food. So be constant that, guys. Watch out for these little, you know, dietary myths that you'll hear in the communities about, remember, sources of protein are always gonna be ideal coming from meat, fish, dairy, eggs. And they're always gonna be, they're always gonna be protein and fat based. There's leaner cuts of meat and there's fattier cuts of meat. There's whole eggs and there's egg whites. As long as you're having, so the point is, if you're having a fattier cut of meat like a ribeye, or if you're gonna eat, let's just say five whole eggs post-workout, you don't wanna have rice with that. You don't really wanna have sweet potatoes with that. That's when you want to keep it to just green, fibrous vegetables, asparagus, spinach, broccoli, because those carbohydrates are going to be predominantly fiber, right? They're not going to spike into it all. They're not going to get stored in the body, and your body's just going to primarily use that protein and fat now. And that fat source that's coming from the protein will be what your body wants to utilize for energy at that point, right? But if it was a ribeye and rice, you're eating that rice. That rice is going to be get digested very easily. You're going to use that for, for your energy at the moment. And then all the fat from the ribeye is just going to have no, no, point in the, no point for the body to use it. No utilization. And your body's just going to store it. So remember this, guys. Separate 
your fats and your carbs. I'm not saying you can't have any fat in a meal with carbs, because like I said, grilled chicken breast is still gonna have some fat in it. Sirloin steak is still gonna have some fat in it. A filet is still gonna have some fat in it, but it's gonna be predominantly protein. So if you're doing a high protein piece of meat and then a high carb, simple carb, like a sweet potato, because again, filet and sweet potato, filet and white rice, the White rice is just straight carbs. The sweet potato is just straight carbs. It doesn't matter because now you have straight carbs with a lean source of protein, which is predominantly protein, and you're only eating protein and carbs. But now again, if you do that sweet potato, that white rice with a ribeye, or with 80, 20 grass-fed beef, all that fat is just gonna get stored in the body weight, right? But now that's why, if you're on a keto diet, or if you're only following, let's just say you're naturally on a high-carb, low-fat diet, then naturally each meal you're probably gonna be eating leaner meats. If you're on a ketogenic type of diet, naturally those carbs are gonna be low, so you really don't have to worry about that. But it's for the people who just wanna you know, eat normally, right? Don't wanna to have to worry about a high carb diet or a high fat diet. Just be conscious of how you pair food groups together. Hope this gave you a little bit of insight of what I find to be the biggest mistake holding people back from getting lean. And one other thing I'll mention, when you're in a calorie deficit, meaning you're burning more than you're intaking, this principle is a little less you know, prominent, meaning it's not really gonna hold so much weight or measure as, a, as in terms of you, know, you actually storing body fat. Because if you're in a deficit, naturally you're gonna be losing weight, right? But you can still apply those principles for easier digestion. Because again, high fat, high carb meal, no matter what, One's still gonna get stored and one's still gonna get prioritized even if you're in that deficit. And which will in turn make digestion harder, cause more bloating. So keep the meals separate. Higher fat meals, keep it with just green vegetables. Higher carb meals, keep it in with a lean type of protein. Guarantee you guys start implementing these principles, you're gonna notice fat gain will be at a minimal and you're gonna just start looking better and feeling better. And then again, if you're on a bulk, this is, what's really, this is when it's really gonna make a difference, right? Because now when you're on a bulk and you're eating in that surplus, when you're primed to put on weight naturally, now if you start mixing carbs and fats, it's like you're really gonna have a spillover effect. So it's really important now to you know, separate the carbs and the fats from each other so you really don't get that spillover effect and you start to store minimal body fat and just worry about putting on as much muscle mass as possible. And that's literally how I've been eating for years now. And I'm at 173 pounds right now, no, uh, it's December. Last December, I was still in the 160s, still around 13% body fat. So over that last year, I built 10 pounds of muscle. So when I was leaner this past summer, later Ryan, this past summer, I was as lean as I was at the heaviest body weight. And then this summer coming up, I'm gonna be the same leanness at an even heavier body weight because the goal now is for me to get to 180 pounds. And you guys really don't ever see me going over maybe 13, 14% body fat ever, right, during my bulk. And that's me pushing calories close to 3,700 at my peak when I'm in a bulk. And currently right now I'm around 33, 3,500, right? So like I said, I hope this gave you guys a little insight of the mistakes I see a lot of people making. Don't make this mistake yourself and you're gonna start seeing better body composition, less fat gain, overall better aesthetics. So like always guys, you have a question or comment, leave it in the comment section. You already know I get back to you guys. Like the video, it helps the algorithm out. Share with your friends and your family. If you're not subscribed yet, smash that subscribe button. And like always guys, peace out. Bar Naturals. They all love to talk, you know they do that shit the most. Think you on my level, boy, but you ain't even close.